الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله We are continuing our readings in the work that is entitled Al-Adab Al-Shari'iyya Fil Ma'ashara Al-Zawjiyya Legislative Etiquettes Concerning Marital Life And before this evening some of the sections that we have covered in this particular work we have covered the introduction we have covered al wasiyatu bin nisa we have covered the advice concerning the women we have covered the prohibition of oppressing one's wife we have covered being fair and just with one's women we have covered the rights that the woman or that the wife has over her husband. We have also covered the rights that the husband has over his wife. We have covered the prohibition of the wife asking for a divorce without a justified reason and without due right. And last week, we covered the issue of dealing with and managing the women, as well as the issue of not following her faults, not following up and chasing after her faults. So this leads us to the next section that we are to begin with this evening, and it is Adabu Laylatul Bina Bil Urus. The etiquettes that the newlyweds should have with one another on Laylatul Bina, on the night of building, on the night of construction, the first night that they have together. For certainly, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has laid out for us his spectacular guidance and his superb methodology that the spouses should have with one another on the night of construction. In this evening, this night is some of the most important of the nights that they will have throughout the entire of their marital life. And the more complete that this night is between the two spouses, then this good dealing, this good treatment that they have with one another, these etiquettes that they display with one another on this evening, is the foundation of their marriage and may very well affect many days of their lives together thereafter. And how many times does this night go poorly? How many times does this night begin in a bad fashion? between many husbands and their wives. And because of that, how large of an effect does it have upon their marital life thereafter? And how many times is it that the married couple, those husbands and wives, have a splendid night together and it builds the foundation for happiness throughout the remainder of their lives together. And the prophetic guidance that has been laid out for us in the sunnah concerning this night 
is from the most complete and perfect of guidance to follow. How can this not be? And his guidance is the guidance of the seal of the Prophet. And his guidance is the guidance of the leader and the master of all of the messengers. This guidance has come from the individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described him in his book with the statement, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And certainly you are upon a superb character. And his wife, and the one that was beloved to him, Aisha, radiallahu anha, she described his character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فقالت, so she stated, القرآن كان خلقه القرآن His character was the Quran. As it's coming a hadith that is Hassan, that is recorded by a Nasai and others. And indeed, his character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the Quran. So now, my dear fellow and brother Muslim, we would like to get to know and become aware of some of the noble prophetic guidance concerning the night of construction between the two spouses and some of the etiquettes in that regard. The next section states, A taslim ala al layratul bina Giving the salam or the two spouses conveying the salam to one another on the night of building. In the author here he states, there is no doubt that the woman, when she leaves the home of her family and she moves to the house of her husband, that on that first night, on the night of construction, it is very likely that she may be stricken with some level of uncomfortability, some level of fear, or even perhaps some level of dread. For indeed, she is starting off a new life with a new partner that she does not know much about him. And she only was able to get to know him up to a certain extent. So for this reason, it is or for this reason from those things that are most important and obligatory upon the husband during the night of construction is that he does or he puts forth everything that is in his ability to push away or to suppress or to do away with this level of uncomfortability or fear that she may have or that he should decrease it to the utmost of his ability. For he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has taught us his noble guidance and his methodology in doing away completely with this feeling of dread or this feeling of uncomfortability or and decreasing it. Well, here, a salam, and it is giving the salam. For on Um Salama, radiallahu anha, in the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lemma tazawajaha, for arada and yet hula alayha, salama. For certainly the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he had married her, and he wanted to enter upon her, he gave the salam. If he entered into the room where she was, he would convey the salam. So if the salam does away and suppresses hatred, and does away with malice and rancor, for an individual who is your opponent, Allah then it is only more logical that the salam 
will do away with this sense of uncomfortability or fear that she may have towards her husband. The next section states, الدُّعَاءَ لِلْعُرُوسِ عِنْدَ الْبِنَا بِهَا The supplication that is made or the supplication that the husband makes for the wife during the night of construction. It is highly recommended for the husband to supplicate for his wife on the night of construction. And what we mean by later to be not, night of construction, night of building, meaning the night that he uh, enters upon. For certainly the Prophet he encouraged the husbands to take his wife by her forelock. Yeah, I need to place his hand on her forehead. وَيَدْعُ لَهَا بِالدُّعَاءَ الْمَأْثُورَ And to supplicate for her with that supplication that has been narrated in the sunnah. أَلَهُمَّا إِنِّي أَسْأَلَكَ خَيْرَهَا وَخَيْرَ مَا جَرَبْتَهَا عَلَيْهِ O Allah, I ask you for her khayr. O Allah, I ask you for her good in her excellence. And I ask you for the good from the natural disposition that you have placed her upon. And I seek refuge in you from her evil and from the evil that uh, may be a part of the natural disposition that you have created her upon. And this hadith as well is Hassan. It has been recorded by Abu Dawood, Abu Dawood, and the Nasai, and others. And in the last section that we will take for this evening, inshallah ta'ala, is Malatafa al-Uruz. Malatafa al-Uruz. The newlyweds being kind to one another. And the author states here, after he has done away with this level of fear, after he has done away with this level of dread or uncomfortability that his wife may have through giving her the salam often and supplicating for her, then it is imperative upon the husband that he is very kind to her and that he plays with her and that he jokes with her. For indeed, bashfulness and shyness is from the natural characteristics of the woman that she has been created upon. And when the, the wife that has just gotten married, when she is a virgin, then this bashfulness or shyness may be experienced from her more so than from a woman who has already previously been married. So for this reason, being kind to her and joking with her and playing with her, it has a very strong impact upon uh, decreasing the level of her shyness and her bashfulness with her husband. So we should look to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he was kind with his wives when he was initially building his relationship with his wives. For Asma bint Yazid radiallahu anha, she states that she was preparing, certainly I prepared Aisha for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I came to him, or the after I came to him, and I told him to come and she was ready. So he came and he sat down next to her side. 
and he brought her a cup of milk and then he drank from it and then he offered it to her sallallahu alaihi wasallam for her to also drink from it and when he did this she lowered her head and she became very shy so asma then urged her forward and i said to her khudi min yad an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam take from the hand of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani take what he is offering you qalat so she says that i i took it and then i drank something from it in this hadith is also hasan ibn al-qurayb by imam ahmad rahimahu allah ta'ala so for this reason it is highly recommended for the husband to offer something to his family on the night of building it is recommended for him to offer her a glass of milk as the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did or a glass of juice or whatever takes the place of these two things so that because of this it can begin to build some closeness between them to which they can begin to build their relationship and is dealing with her in this fashion will also aid in decreasing the level of her shyness and the level of her bashfulness with her husband and he should not treat her in a fashion that the male camel treats the female camel when he comes to her meaning what meaning before uh the actual intercourse he doesn't just bring himself upon her in that fashion but rather uh he precedes that with making her comfortable he precedes that with treating her kindly he precedes that with conversing with her and treating her nice and the like of those things that follow that before actually entering upon and into her for certainly the bashfulness and the modesty of the woman may prevent her from responding to him upon his uh initial call or upon his initial invitation or extension to her so for this reason he should strive to appease her he should strive to make her happy he should strive to do those things with her that are going to decrease the level of her uncomfortability and decrease the level of her shyness and bashfulness before entering upon her in that fashion so it is obligatory upon the husband that he does not treat her in an incorrect fashion during the night of construction but rather he is lenient with her he appeases her and he is kind with her until he achieves his objective and inshallah ta'ala uh next week we will cover some of the prophetic advice and some of the legislated measures uh concerning intercourse in the light of the book of allah and the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but this is for next week so with that we say نكتفي بهذا القدر والله اعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين